In this one, I'm hoping to complete Happy Path functionality completely. So in our lowest price filter, what I want to do is just add in the remaining parts here. We'll run the test and then what we'll go and do is we'll fire a request, a request into it from Postman and hopefully we should get back the data that we are expecting. So let's go and take this piece by piece. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. And our next step is to actually check if the modified price is less than the lowest price and if so that's when we'll actually set these values and we'll remove the hard coding of these values and use the real ones. So check if modified price is less than lowest price. If you remember we, est we established a lowest price at the top here or a starting lowest price by multiplying the quantity by price. If modified price is less than lowest price then we need to grab all of this stuff and just move it into there and so our first step is to uh, set these values on the inquiry so save to inquiry properties discounted price will be the modified price the price if you remember at the top we acquired it there and so we made the decision that for the uh, price field we were going to use the actual price of an individual uh, item so I think what we can do is actually cut that from there because it's always going to be the same it isn't going to be changed by any promotions filtering so where we retrieve the price there then we'll set the price okay hopefully that made sense set promotion ID so from this we can get it straight off the promotion get ID and then set the promotion name get name so if this promotion turns out to be the one which um, produces the lowest price then we set the properties on the inquiry DTO and then we need to update the lowest price for the next uh, iteration so lowest price equals modified price next what I'm actually going to do is go over and test this so on our lowest price filter test let's just go and check this out so I'm probably expecting a couple of errors here because I don't think we have all the fields for example we need we're going to need a request date and voucher code so we'll go and run it anyway rather than guess I usually just run the tests and let the test tell me what the problems are. So, vendor bin PHP unit tests unit lowest price filter test. Hit go. So, we have an error typed property. Uh, lowest price inquiry request date must not be accessed before initialization. So, we're trying to access the request date at some point. Uh, it will be in the date range multiplier uh, before we've actually set a request date. So, inquiry set request date. Uh, it needs to fall uh, within those bounds for the Black Friday half price for sale. So uh, 25th of November and the 28th of November. Let's set this to the 27th. Okay, run the tests again. And so we get another error typed property. App DTO lowest price inquiry voucher code must not be accessed before initialization. So we also need one of those. Okay, let's run the tests again. And so this time we get one test three assertions. So uh, the price is being set and the discounted price is being set. How about if we went and uh, just changed the date? In fact, if we change the date so it's outside of the Black Friday sale, so if you set this to 30, it means, according to my maths, the next lowest price will be this one. Buy one, get one free. Uh, should return a price of or a discounted price of 300 so let's go and run this and so indeed it does uh, we fail to assert that 300 is identical to 250 so this time um, it's not used a Black Friday half price sale it's used to buy one get one free but we'll change that back 
run the tests again. So that's all green. Now what I want to do is go and strip out all of these comments because um, we just put them there as guides. So don't leave comments in there, or I don't leave comments in there that just tell you what is happening. If I need to explain why or reasons for doing something, uh, then I'll do that. But it should be quite obvious what's happening here. For example, we know that we're looping over the, the promotions if we've got a for each which says uh, promotions as promotion. And this stuff here, we don't need this. It, it was just guiding us really. We know that we're checking if the modified price is less than the lowest price. So just go through, strip out all the noise. If you use good names and if you use good method names and good variable names, uh, and if it's quite clear what you're doing, such as checking uh, a certain condition, then you don't need any of that stuff. What I'll do now is just make sure that everything's up and running or I'll just get everything up and running again because uh, it's been a while since I had my server running on this and also uh, since I had uh, Docker running and my database. So I need to start those things again and just go and check that I've got all the data and everything uh, which I need for this to work. So Docker compose up hyphen D. Obviously if you've already got Docker running then you don't need to follow this step. I'll go and set this going now. Okay, great. And then I'm going to set the server running as well. So Symphony server colon start hyphen D. I'm just going to get the port number for my database in Docker so I can do Docker PS. And so here we see uh, MySQL 8 and where it says ports, I'm looking for this one here, 50915. So 3306, that is your uh, Docker port, your container port. 50915 is the port on the host. So I'll copy that and then I'll go and uh, change the port number in my connection, test my connection and just connect to table plus. And so I'll look at my promotions. As you can see, when I create this, uh, I have the one for the Black Friday half price sale, I have the voucher code, but I don't have the even items multiplier. So buy one, get one free. And that was even underscore items underscore multiplier. Uh, the adjustment was 0 0.5. And then for my JSON, it was minimum quantity two. I then need to link that to the product. So here, uh, ID of three, so it will be product ID one and promotion ID three. I'll leave the valid two as null. We'll save that. And then over in Postman here, I'm just gonna change this request date so it falls within the uh, times for the Black Friday half price sale. And then I think I can fire off this request. So uh, my product ID is one in the pre-request script. All the values look okay there. Let's give this a go. Okay, so we've got 200 back. And this looks good. So we get the discounted price of 250, price of 100, uh, the promotion ID and Black Friday half price sale. Let's go and change this date so that it would no longer fall within the bounds of the Black Friday half price sale and see what happens when we do that. Okay, great. So now it has changed to buy one, get one free and the discount price is 300 and the promotion ID is three. So really you could say we've got a working product there, but there are still things which need sorting out. Let me give you some examples. Say for example, if I remove the request date and send this off, we get an internal server error because um, it's unable to find a request date on our lowest price inquiry. So we need to add some validation to our uh, lowest price inquiry DTO. Just gonna change this back so it's working again. I don't like to end on things that ain't working. And if we go back to our application, there's things here, for example, this uh, promotion inquiry interface, it's um, very, uh, it doesn't have much detail in there. And it also, we're making assumptions here that we can get a product off of that inquiry and that we can get a quantity off that inquiry, whereas we haven't actually enforced that. So uh, we're gonna have to change this for something a little bit more specific. 
and then I think what we'll do is we'll just round things off by having some uh, uniform error handling which is the same throughout the application so that we always have uh, we always return the same kind of errors in the same kind of format which makes it easy for other services to understand and to use if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.